Welcome to the Physics GRE GR1777 Solutions by yours truly, the Rogue Professor. I also want to point out that all of these solutions can be found at www.physicsgre.org. Um, so before we get started, let's also look at the table of information provided uh, in the GRE. We are going to get some constants that we need not memorize, some prefixes for powers of 10, and rotational inertia about the center of mass, all of which we can refer back to throughout the exam. So knowing that, let's get started. Number one, a net force F of A acts on object A and a net force F of B acts on object B. The mass of object B is twice the mass of object A and the acceleration of object B is twice that of object A. Which of the following is true of forces F of A and F of B? So we know from Newton's second law that F of A equals MA and F of B, as the problem states, equals 2m times 2a, m being the mass, a being the acceleration. So F of B simply equals 4 times F of A, and that is answer E. Number two, two objects sliding on a frictionless surface, as represented above, collide and stick together. How much kinetic energy is converted to heat during the collision? So we're going to use the conservation of momentum, and we have to use the vector form since it's two-dimensional. So we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared um, from the Pythagorean theorem. And in this case, the hypotenuse of the diagram is going to be the initial momentum. So we have right here is what we're calculating. And c is going to equal 0.5 times 2, that quantity squared. 0.5 times 2, that quantity squared right there, plus 1 squared, that's 1 and 1, that's our momentum in that direction, and that whole quantity square root, and that is going to equal the square root of 2 kilogram meters per second. So if that's our initial momentum, um, we know that the final momentum is going to have to equal the sum of the two masses because they stick together times the final velocity. So then the square root of 2 is going to equal 1.5 kilograms, that's 1 kilogram plus 0.5 kilograms, times the final velocity. So 2 times the square root of 2 um, divided by 3 equals the final velocity. And so then we can plug in for our energy equation to see the change of energy between the initial energy and the final energy, um, the kinetic energy that is, that's going to be our um, energy lost to heat. So our kinetic energy initially equals 1 half m1 v1 squared plus 1 half m2 v2 squared equals 3 half joules. Our kinetic energy final is 1 half the quantity m1 plus m2, that quantity that was stuck together, times the final velocity squared, that equals 2 thirds joules. So the change in kinetic energy, again, is the energy transferred to, as heat. And so that's going to equal 3 halves minus 2 thirds. Uh, we're going to simplify the denominators. We get 9 over 6 minus 4 over 6 equals 5 over 6 joules. That again is answer E. Number three, two simple pendulums, A and B, consist of identical masses suspended from strings of length L of A and L of B, respectively. The two pendulums oscillate in equal gravitational fields. If the period of pendulum B is twice the period of pendulum A, which of the following is true? of the lengths of the two pendulums. So we know, which is from the simple pendulum equation, that T of A equals two pi, and then times the square root of the length divided by G, the acceleration from gravity. And as the problem states, um, the period of the pendulum B equals two pi, and we have four times the length over the same, uh, same G as in T of A. And so if we take the square root of 4, that's going to simply equal, take it out to be 2. We have, well, 2 pi times the square root of 4. So 2 pi times 2 is 4 pi. And that is just sim simply 2 times the period of pendulum A. And that is answer E. And also, let's just point out real quick, we can keep track of how well everybody did relative to how comfortable we feel about uh, the solutions that um, we are know how to do versus going into it don't know how to do by checking the number in the bottom right to see what percentage of test takers actually took the test got the problem we're working on right. So number four, for the circuit shown in the figure above, what is the current I? through the two omega resistors. So that's this resistor right here. 
Um, so the current splits for resistors in parallel, um, it's not going to be affected by resistors in series. So we know that the voltage equals IR total, the total resistance, and to get that total resistance, let's convert this to a simpler circuit. So if we convert this, we can, um, from the resistors that are in parallel, we can combine them with the equivalent resistance, one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over dot 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 equals one over R equivalent. So for our parallel resistors, we have one over R equivalent equals one over one omega plus one over two omega. Um, so therefore, our equivalent equals two-thirds uh, omega. So our total is going to be that two-thirds omega plus the one omega from the one that's in series. Remember, resistors in series just add R1 plus R2 plus R3. Um, so bringing that information up here, we have our, our current, our initial current I equals 20 volts. Um, that's the battery. Uh, that's going to be divided by the total resistance, which was again five thirds omega, and that's going to be 12 amps. That's our um, initial current. So our voltage, the parallel drop um, of the voltage, is going to be the current times the equivalent resistance. And we found the, again the equivalent resistance of the two resistors in parallel down here to be two thirds omega. So we're going to have 12 amps, that's the current, times 2 thirds, that's the equivalent resistance, that equals 8 volts. And then the, that's the drop across the two um, resistors in parallel. And then for the first resistor, that drop is simply going to be equal times the current times the resistance, that was 12 amps times 1 omega, equals 12 volts, that's the drop across the first one. So what's the current going through I2, the 2 uh, omega resistor? Um, that's going to equal the voltage total divided by um, the voltage total going, uh, the drop going through that one. And that's going to equal V divided by the resistance of that resistor. So it's going to equal 8 volts, um, which is the parallel resistor's drop. 8 volts divided by 2 omega, that's 4 amps. And if you're curious, um, the, draw, the, uh, the current going through the 1 omega is going to be the voltage drop across those two in parallel divided by its resistance. So that would be 8 amps going through this resistor if you're curious. But it asked us about the 2 omega resistor and that is answer B. And let's always try to remember, I, if you have a, um, a circuit problem with batteries and whatnot, always try to convert it to the simplest possible circuit as we've done here. Um, so let's go on to number five. By definition, the electric displacement current through a surface S is proportional to, um, so from Maxwell's equations, we know that a time-varying electric field that makes um, time-varying electric field that makes an electric current creates a magnetic field. Um, so that is what Maxwell added to Ampere's law and that is um, the rate of change of the electric flux um, through S and it's this right here and so as you can see that is answer E. Number six, the electric field of a plane electromagnetic wave of wave number K and angular frequency W is given by E equals EO quantity EX plus EY and that quantity times sine quantity KZ minus uh, WT. So which of the following gives the direction of the associated magnetic field? Um, so I've drawn a beautiful little picture down here for you guys to display this. So the electric and magnetic field must maintain their 90 degree angle if the electric field leans towards the positive x direction. So here we are leaning towards the positive x direction. Then the magnetic field leans towards the positive y direction to maintain the 90 degree angle. So here, so this was our initial magnetic field leaning towards the positive y direction. So again, it's going to maintain this 90 degree angle. So the addition of the y component to the electric field, it does not affect the angle of the magnetic field, just the magnitude. So the magnitude uh, or the magnetic field was originally in the minus x direction. Um, it is still in the minus x direction after the angle shift, but now also has a positive y component, as you can see right here. 
So um, the answer with a negative x component and positive y component is answer B. Number seven, which of the following is true about any system that undergoes a reversible thermodynamic process? Well, a reversible process means that entropy does not change and that the system is in equilibrium with its surroundings. So that's going to be answer C. Number eight, for which of the following thermodynamic processes is the increase in the internal energy of an ideal gas equal to the heat added to the gas? So an isochoric process is a process where the volume of the system doesn't change, for example, a rigid container. And all heat added goes to increasing the pressure, which increases the internal energy. Um, so that would be answer B, because we would have constant volume. Number nine, the root mean square speed of molecules in an ideal gas of molar mass m at temperature T is, um, so we have 1 half mv squared equals 3 halves kT, where k is Boltzmann's constant, t is the temperature, um, m is mass, and v is the velocity. So we have v equals the square root of 3 kT over m, and here we just set k equal to n over capital N, that quantity times r, and for molar mass we set um, n over n equal to 1. So that is going to be answer D. Number 10, light of variable frequency uh, shines on the metal surface of a photoelectric tube. Einstein's theory of the photoelectric effect predicts that, so we have QV equals HF minus HF subscript T, where F subscript T, that's the threshold frequency of the metal, and so, um, as you can see, this, this, this is a linear equation, and so that is answer D. Where V is our um, potential difference, and Q is our charge. Okay, so that was a set of 10, and I will see you in the next set of videos.